We will find out very, very soon by tonight, in the next few hours, whether they're going to let me get on an airplane from Dallas, Texas, and fly to England. They've not put any blocks on it yet, but we will find out very, very soon. And Lord willing, I will be in Britannia. I will be in the United Kingdom, New World Order, Command Base, Alpha Delta. I will be there tomorrow. And the real Bilderberg coverage really does start now because they are trying to restrict free speech. They're involved in all sorts of shenanigans. I'm going to talk about that after the break. And also just want to go over some of the crazy headlines. And they get crazier every week. How much nuttier and out of control will corporations and bureaucracies and governments and individuals be as the collective insanity intensifies? We will look at that coming up after this quick break. And we're also going to look at something I covered earlier in the week, and that is Bill O'Reilly uh, cutting in a video clip of me ranting out of context uh, and saying that it is hate speech and then going along with Facebook calling for censorship. We're going to look at that as well. And then we'll also try to look at something I covered on Friday, but I think it's still pertinent. Um, you know, it was announced earlier this year that France is set to ban the words mother and father because they're, they're hurtful to people. That's London Telegraph. Um, one of our reporters uh, did a, a report, uh, Gigi Arnetta, uh, did a report breaking down the fact that the Justice Department, the same ones that ran Fast and Furious, the same ones that uh, are involved in so many other forms of corruption, the IRS persecution, the harassment of the media, the going after whistleblowers, going after the press, the authoritarians that pose as liberals and give themselves peace prizes and that fund al-Qaeda uh, overseas and all the rest of it, they're now saying, and I'm reading from the LBGT Inclusion at Work, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective Managers, uh, to use inclusive language, do not uh, use words like husband or wife, because that might offend somebody if you use that term. And, of course, the state now is announcing in Europe that they will be the new parent. So now you're only allowed to call parents, not father or mother, but parent. Uh, and then I have articles out of England where the same thing is going on. And, again, people on Infowars.com are questioning, going, hey, my daughter's gay or, you know, what are you against them? Listen, it's not about that. It's about all these TV shows targeting under you know, 10-year-olds with how to have sex, uh, how to uh, become a transvestite, how to whatever. There is no business of the government or anybody else or the media involved in this. And this is done to confuse gender roles and break down the family. This is an attack on the family. But if you don't go along with that attack, why you hate people, which I do not hate any of these people. But I wish none of this was going on, so I didn't have to even address it. And, and it's so brazen how they sell this authoritarianism packaged in the name of inclusion, packaged uh, in the name of tolerance. And so it gets a lot of real liberals, you know, Thomas Jefferson types, to go along with all of this thinking, oh, well, it's just about inclusion, when that's not what it is. Okay, from the top, the documents are public. I cover it in my film Endgame, Blueprint uh, for Global Enslavement, and in the expanded extras that are online that the major universities on record said we're going to encourage with chemicals and things people not knowing their gender and we're going to encourage homosexuality and things so people don't have kids they want you alone by yourself a human resource to be basically euthanized at age 55 that's their plan that's what globalist health care is about and in the next few hours uh, we will find out whether or not i'm allowed to get on an international uh, flight that I've booked to fly to the United Kingdom to cover 150 members of royalty uh, and government, the new royalty, uh, that have been trying to meet in secret since 1954 when it was founded by a bunch of uh, Nazis after World War II. We will find out whether or not I'm able to go to England to cover Bilderberg 2013. I say that because thousands of people, including our own Michael Savage here in the United States, talk show host, uh, have been banned from going into England. If you basically don't support communism, world government, destruction of the family, uh, if you don't think that the family itself is an, uh, an abhorrent fraud, if you don't want 100% taxation, uh, you are blocked from flying into England uh, some of the time. We'll, we'll see what happens with this. 
And I want to cover that first before I hit some other news. Then I'm going to get into Bill O'Reilly last week. He attacked me. He talked about hate speech and Facebook banning hate speech, which is a Soviet term, and then played a clip of me talking out of context that didn't even make sense, uh, ranting about the New World Order killing people and hoping they don't come after me, basically. And then he just cut that in and to some piece about sexual harassment online and hate speech when I don't even talk about stuff like that. So just really bizarre to see News Corps that is being harassed by the White House and having their free speech violated and their sources arrested for just reporting news, having Bill O'Reilly, who I know people inside Fox, he basically is Roger Ailes now. You know, Roger Ailes is kind of old and, and uh, reportedly has some health problems. And so like Bill O'Reilly is like the boss of News Corps, at least in the Fox division. What is he doing constantly? Every few weeks there's some new attack. Uh, it's like Rachel Maddow saying that I said the tornado uh, was sent by Obama a few weeks ago that hit Oklahoma City suburb of Moore. I didn't say that. I'm on record not saying that. I said a caller said, did the government do this? I think they did. A caller from Oklahoma City. And I said, no, but there is big weather modification programs and weather warfare programs. And who knows if it's screwing the weather up. But, you know, hurricanes are actually, you know, in, in a decade low right now. Uh, tornadoes are in a 60-year low. That's USA Today. Just type it in. And I said, it's probably a real tornado. And then that turns into Rachel Maddow saying, Rachel Maddow saying that I say Obama sent the tornado. That's the type of garbage we're talking about. And you have to ask yourself, why are they doing this? Why is CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, the New York Times, uh, Bloomberg, you, I mean, you name it, Nightline, coming after Alejandro Jones. That's me, in case you didn't know. That's Spanish. I'm showing off. I know Spanish. It's Alexander. It's Alejandro. But the point is, I'm under attack. Why is that? Because I'm real. I believe in the Constitution Bill of Rights. I know how the globalists operate. I've got their number. And we are growing exponentially. And they can look at a graph and they can see where we're going. They can see that we're on the march. The empire is on the run. Now, speaking of that, here are the articles up on InfoWars.com. And, and the live coverage of Bilderberg 2013, it officially kicks off this Thursday. But if I get into England, I have reporters, two reporters in England already. They're going to be there. So regardless, we're going to have live coverage. But if I get in, I'm going to be there on the ground with members of the British Parliament, uh, members of the EU Parliament. Oh, yes, the UK Independence Party, the fastest growing party there. Our listeners, they're like Ron Paul type folks. They are, they are aware of what's going on. Lord Moncton, Nigel Farage, so many others. They're going to be uh, there covering it. They're in the parliament talking about it. So many exciting things are happening. And I've had the police uh, head captain over security call me and, and basically admit that Bilderberg's running things and that saying that he's a listener, but that uh, this private security firm has been put in charge and all the rest of this is going on and that they want to support our First Amendment right or over there they call it press right. Uh, you know, to cover this, but at the same time, they're saying no pedestrians around the multi-thousand acre compound that this Grove Hotel is at where they're meeting. And again, for years they've said this whole thing is non-existent and doesn't exist, but now they're forced to admit it exists. And we have articles up on InfoWars.com with the official county and the city, uh, the county of uh, Hertfordshire, and uh, the city of Watford with the official Bilderberg seal and letterhead uh, where they are basically in control of the whole area. So this globalist mafia that the New York Times says doesn't exist uh, is coming to town. And now it's in the Daily Mail, it's in the BBC. They're all being forced to report on it because Infowars.com and then DrudgeReport.com and WorldNetDaily.com and others ran the blockade in the last decade, exposing that this really does exist and covering it all. So now we're forcing the dinosaur kleptocratic uh, supporting media to cover this, but still begrudgingly. And we've got the maps on Infowars.com. And we have a special page, Infowars.com forward slash Bilderberg. And if you're public school educated like I am and have trouble with that, just Infowars.com forward slash big or B-I-G. Or if you've drunk too much fluoride and taken too many vaccines, you're totally brain damaged like I am. 
We just have Bilderberg.com. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a different site. We have Infowars.com forward slash B, just the letter B. And George Orwell said freedom was the capacity to say two plus two equals four. No, no, that's too advanced for us. It's the freedom is the understanding and the capacity to go to Infowars.com forward slash the letter B. Not the numeral, but the letter B. Infowars.com forward slash B as in bumblebee, as in bodacious. Does bodacious start with a B? Uh, B as in B as in possum. Wait, that's a P. The point is it's infowars.com forward slash big sis. No, that's not a URL. Infowars.com forward slash B or forward slash big or forward slash Bilderberg. We're going to have live video feeds. They're free for everybody on the ground in England with about 10 different reporters. Because it turns out we actually don't just have two reporters in the UK full time paid salary. We've got auxiliary reporters. So when I said we got about 10 people there. I think it's going to be more, more than 10 people. The point is, is that you're going to have thousands of people converging on this thing. And it's in the middle of the countryside, and the police have put out an order saying no one is allowed to walk on the sidewalk. And citizens in the area, people that live there, pay the taxes, they have to show ID to walk down the street with their dog in a rural area. And the Brits love to walk uh, or to drive their car. So it's martial law coming to Watford, England, northwest of London, out in the middle of nowhere, beautiful rolling countryside. Martial law because a bunch of war criminals and globalists who've been indicted before. Kissinger one time didn't go to a Bilderberg meeting 10 years ago in London because uh, Pinochet had been arrested when he went in there. You know, the, the former Chilean dictator. That's a conspiracy theory. Chile doesn't exist. I choose to ignore your information just by, just by saying you're stupid. That's just some of what's going to be going on. So this is historic. This is big as an in Infowars.com forward slash B. Not B-E-E, -E, but Infowars.com forward slash B. All right, I'm kind of word playing that forever. That was not done on purpose. I'm out of control. Here's some of the other news up on Infowars.com from Forbes. I want to apologize. I, I said Obamacare, according to Reuters, was going to double the price of the average insurance policy in 2013. I, 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 in some areas, it's 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 146% increase because <laughs> the foreign banks that own the insurance companies wrote it. So, of course, it does that. Because they make you buy a product now, it's going to go up. Uh, in California, Obamacare, or I should say Obamination Care, to increase individual health care insurance premiums by 146. And weighing in on this side of the arena is Big Sis Spymaster. But you call her a liberal. And Obama's bombing more countries and funding Al-Qaeda to attack Syria now. That's okay, because you got a peace prize. And Americans have only rebuilt less than half of their wealth, lost in the recession study, says, if you believe we're even out of that. But don't worry, all over the country, the federal government is uh, canceling fireworks displays, because they, they fund those locally. Your local government can't fund things. The government has to run that, the federal government. So that's basically that. We'll be back with Bill O'Reilly. He says, shut down free speech. He agrees with Facebook. Speech. Now Facebook is apologizing for allowing it worldwide. But can anything be done to stop the hatred, which is directly linked into the IRS Tea Party scandal? We'll have a factor investigation. This is a guy who put caller ID on his radio show that was unpopular and failed. And if someone disagreed with him, he's such a bully punk. I like to get in a boxing ring with Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly, I challenge you to a pay-per-view boxing match. You think you're so tough. You now your dad was a you know tough Irish cop, beat you up, you say. Well, come on. You think you know you're a lot bigger than me? Let's get in the ring, buddy. In fact, you can bring one of your buddies. Because I can only wake up when there's two people to fight. You and whoever you want in the ring, let's go, punk. All right, you think you're so tough, you try to intimidate your guests, you get in their face, you turn their mic off, you get in their face and poke your finger in their face, you big fat bully. You sit there whenever um, you're scared to have me on your show. Of course, you get like 10 million viewers. You normally have about 2 million. Let's pull up his latest ratings. They've dropped a lot. I mean, sure, 
you're you're coming down fast, but you're miles above MSNBC and CNN. But still, I mean, you're jealous. You your radio show failed, and he gets up there and agrees we should shut down hate speech, which is anybody criticizing the corrupt media and government. And all these old fake neocons, all these fake conservatives, all these fake liberals, all these socialists, all these authoritarians, they're all the dying dinosaur media in a perfect storm with the rotting government. Their ratings are all dropping, our ratings are going up, and they know that and they're upset. And so they're circling the wagons like, like you know what's circling the toilet bowl. Like Carl Rove, Turd Blossom circling the, the, the toilet bowl. They are, I mean, you got Carl Rove attacking the alternative media and the Tea Party and, and Rand Paul and, and, and uh, Ted Cruz because we're the future, you're the past. You've got the entire hit parade of neocons attacking Matt Drudge and DrudgeReport.com because Matt Drudge it was the past, the present, and the future because he likes liberty. He likes the truth. He likes the racy reality of standing up to tyranny. He's the future. He's independent, you're the past. I'm independent, I'm the future, you're the past. The wave of the future. And you know we're the wave of the future. And you don't like the wave of the future. You know you're stayed in a joke. I mean, somebody calls in and attacks me and says, I disagree with you. I don't run and try to hook up caller ID and then, and then have private security go to the person's house. I don't sit here and get female employees at my office and call them up every night going, I'll give you a raise if you come over here and have sex with me. That's what Bill O'Reilly settled on out of court. I mean, he's a bully perv. You want to start a fight with me, punk? Huh? You punk? You think you can shove me around? You're a coward. And that's why you'll take me out of context and call for Facebook to censor Myself and others, you want to use me as the poster boy of, uh, of your censorship, of your attempt to extinguish the fire of liberty? Thank you for throwing me in that briar patch, pal. You're a coward, punk. Excuse me, I got a lot of news to cover, but I'm going to get to that later. I've had enough of it. O'Reilly has three million viewers, and that's been dropping. This guy thinks if he ignores us that, 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 that that's how he suppresses the liberty movement. And then if he just occasionally plays clips out of context, he'll inoculate his audience into disliking us when all you did was send your moderately sized audience over to us, Bill. And by the way, uh, some of the liberal sites posted it, and the, most of the conservatives and the liberals and libertarians, when I was reading the comments, unified and defended me. Only you could unify people. Only you, Bill O'Reilly. So thanks a lot. You actually do have somewhat of an audience from posing as a, as a conservative. Uh, and so thank you for sending us your audience. Uh, just reminding them we're here so they come over to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And I know it hurts you to do it. You know, you got, you've got um, Glenn Beck saying I'm a spooky fascist. Uh, and a liar with no evidence. Uh, you've got Bill O'Reilly saying I'm hate speech and need to be shut down. You've got Rachel Maddow saying it's time to not give him attention. It's time to not listen to him. Please, Republicans, stop giving him power. And she had a big graphic up there with my face saying twisted. I'm twisted. Maybe I am twisted. That's why I can see all your crap. If I'm twisted, thank the maker that I'm twisted. Thank Jehovah I'm twisted. Thank Yeshua I'm twisted. Thank Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, that I'm twisted. If I'm twisted, Lord, give me more twisting. Twist me up. It's just that the reason you have the entire parade of narcissistic sellout cozied up to different arms of the establishment, different heads of the Hydra, they're to co-op the liberty movement, and these people realize they're losing control of the narrative. That's why they're all panicking. They're sick of hearing about Infowars.com. They're sick of hearing about DrudgeReport.com. 
They're, I mean, Glenn Beck's smart. He's gone to become the leader of libertarians and, you know, what, what I was like 10 years ago on the radio. I mean, he, you know, he at least gets where the market's at. I'll take a mercenary like that any day. He's better than his old buddy O'Reilly. These two were supposedly best buddies. I've seen Beck back on O'Reilly a few months ago, and O'Reilly was being mean to him, and Beck was turning red and laughing back at him. I mean, these guys aren't even nice to each other. How could you travel all over the country with somebody, say you're great buddies with them, and then sit there and snipe at each other because Fox and News Corps ordered them to against Glenn Beck? It's just they have no honor. There is no honor among thieves, as it said. And they're trying to steal your mind. They're trying to steal a real restoration, a revolution against tyranny. They want to shun it off down a black hole. They don't like the fact that Info Wars, they hate that, dot com is setting the agenda more and more. Not setting a baloney division agenda, a distraction agenda, a divide and conquer agenda. They're mad because we are unifying liberty lovers of every race, color, creed, gender, ethnicity, sexual uh, persuasion, uh, whatever, around freedom. That's why they don't like us. That's why they're attacking. And we're giving people hope that we can beat the globalist and we can create justice and then we can have a future together. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there's a lot of sayings out there, but I got to tell you this. One of them that I know is true is that life is an adventure. The only way your life's not an adventure is if all you're doing is watching mainstream television that is designed to literally lower your perception, lower your IQ, lower your event horizon. I am here, for better or worse, because none of us are perfect, to get you to open your mind and expand your horizons. That is my goal. I believe in empowering humanity and the animating contest of liberty. And somebody else who believes in that is my old compadre, media analyst, Mark Dice. And uh, we're going to talk to him right now, right now, about what he did last week on Veterans Day, asking people about Veterans Day in California, and almost none of them even knew what it was. Uh, this is bizarre. So, Mark, tell us your take on this. I want to hear just a few minutes of this. The full clip is up on InfoWars.com. It's on Mark's um, YouTube and Facebook. But, but I mean, this is six minutes long. And, and in the middle, it gets to people that go, I don't care about anybody but me. And they smile at him like that's their possession, like that's their armor. And you will have your bank account taken. You will be injected with cancer viruses. You will be destroyed, you maggot. And these are the people that will vote to take our guns. These are the people that will vote to take our money and give it to them. The globalists take 90%. They give 10% to the unwashed mass who themselves are just as immoral. In fact, they're more immoral than the New World Order. Because the New World Order knows what they're doing is evil and disdains you and is killing you in plain view. And then you're loving it and, and wanting to rob virtuous people. You are the scum of the earth. Let's go to the club. What is Memorial Day for? Um, what is Memorial no, Day for? No, just you. <laughs> What's Memorial Day for? Um, wow. Um, I never really thought about it. Um, this guy's just ignorant. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. I don't know. These people will not. What is Memorial Day for? Take a gold coin. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. In exchange <laughs> for a dollar. Be barbecuing and celebrating. Yeah, we with my buddies. Uh, but you don't know what you're celebrating, though. <laughs> no, no. 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 Oh, it's, oh, it's fun bad. to be ignorant. I don't even know. Good don't even know. No. I don't know what Memorial Day is, man. It's the big holiday. It's like the kickoff to summer when you barbecue and get drunk and stuff. I don't think people from Chicago celebrate that thing, man. They don't celebrate Memorial Day? Nah, they're all ruthless, dude. It's just uh, Southern Yeah, it's California ruthless to be an idiot. Yeah, I think so. Self-centered punk. Definitely, man. You know what I'm talking about, though, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what Memorial Day is? No, nah, I'm pretty drunk. The only way I know it's Memorial is because I don't have work, and that's all I care about, dude. So, yeah. so you don't care about anything else, no. just not working on Memorial Day? Exactly. Nothing else matters that the reason for the day? No. All, all the... the now. 
dog. You don't even know what it means, do I you? I really don't care, yeah. You don't care at all. I'm gonna go over here. Though. Okay, zombie. Memo Memorial Day weekend, the day when we kind of... Oh, uh, that's enough. Uh, ...have a birthday. It goes on and on. I want to go to Mark Dyche, media analyst, author. Uh, Mark, uh, I haven't talked to you since a few weeks ago, but I would guess it's like all your other videos. You, you, you really show what you found. You didn't go edit this, correct? Because you say that's your policy. Uh, or, or, or am I wrong? I mean, how shocking is this that they tell you, I am proud that I only care about myself. Don't they know that then no one's going to care about them? No one's going to come to their aid? There's no humanity, no camaraderie, uh, no... Uh, uh, fealty, uh, no kinship. These, these people are not alive, and the New World Order is already killing them, and no one's going to care about them as they're dying from the hydrofluorosilicic acid. This video is seven minutes long. It could have been 13 minute, minutes long. I had to leave a lot of people out because it just gets redundant. Even at seven minutes, it's too long. But the, what's even worse than them not knowing is them not caring. You could just see the absolute shameful selfishness that these just ignorant uh, Illuminati brainwashed buffoons have become uh, victims of, essentially. And I'm glad that I got to work with your crew a few weeks ago. They came out to Oceanside. We shot a petition video and I, and I showed them, and I'm glad that they got to see it for their, for their own eyes, that these videos can be shot in minutes. I mean, it takes me longer to find a parking spot and walk to the beach and get my camera set up than it does to actually shoot these videos. And I don't know if this is just Southern California. Maybe the zombie plague is sort of focused here, but I have a sneaking suspicion, just judging from the comments in the video and the feedback that I get, that these kinds of people are all over the country, if not the world. Mark, what about the lady? I was telling the guys to cue up the part where the woman in pink is, you know, you start saying, you know, this is the Memorial Day for the surfers that have died. And the woman's like, oh, yes, I, I knew some of the surfers in Hawaii. Um, and it, it's just so creepy. To make the sport popular, are you doing any Yeah, I, I insinuated uh, different reasons for Memorial Day that it was to celebrate the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And I'm just name dropping people that have nothing to do with it. John Wilkes Booth, Jack Lemmon. I think I edited out the point when I mentioned Jesse Ventura being a founding father. And these it, just, <laughs> it goes right over their heads. And some of the people in the feedback and in the emails, the tweets that I've gotten, think that I'm the ignorant one because they just didn't get it. And they thought that I believed that Memorial Day was to celebrate the surfers or was to celebrate the signing of the Declaration. Yeah, they don't get satire. But, but, but expanding on this, whenever you're talking to these people... Uh, Whenever you're sitting there, you say to the one arrogant punk, hey, zombie, what did he say when you said zombie to his face? Well, he just walked away like a little coward. And this was the kid that just said, I just don't care what it's for. Nothing matters. I just got the day off, man. Let's just go and get drunk and party. And, you know, you've seen some of these videos that I've done over the weeks. And I just each week I try to just push the envelope further and further and further. There's only one crazy idea that I had that people wouldn't go along with. And a couple people did, it just took too long. But these videos can be shot in 20 minutes, man. It's, it's, society has lost touch with reality so much. I don't know if you're aware that the, the um, Animal Planet aired a show over the weekend about mermaids, a science fiction, science fantasy mockumentary titled Mermaids, A Body Found. And people took to Twitter, countless people took to Twitter, and thought that a body of a mermaid was found. They just couldn't tell the fake, cheesy actors and reenactments on an Animal Planet show about mermaids. That, that's how out of touch. And, you know, the reason for this is because people don't want to know. You know the, the brain will categorize and prioritize information. If you want to remember something, your brain will put a priority on that. You, you, you meet a beautiful girl, hey, oh, that's Jennifer. I, I need to remember that. So your brain will remember. These people don't want to remember. It just sits, information sits in their short-term memory and gets discarded. It, it's a culture of loving ignorance. These celebrity worshiping absolute scumbags that we see now parading is a whole other issue, posing as Illuminati members themselves. Yeah, we're going to talk about that coming up, but we'll put this on screen for Infowars.com readers. We have your video posted. Uh, general public believes mermaid mockumentary was real. And, 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 and here's my issue. 
I'm not going to join the globalists and try to nerve gas and bioweapon these zombies. A lot of them are brain damaged from that. And they've been brought up by the television to be like this. But they do not have a right to take my guns and team up with the government to take my money so they can sit around on their fat butts. And, and, and that's the thing. These people are dangerous. I mean, how many questionnaires have you done where they say arrest gun owners, put us in FEMA camps? All I needed to do, for much of the audience may be familiar, for those who aren't, I got people to sign a petition to ban, repeal the Second Amendment, confiscate all guns door to door using the military, since we have lists of all the registered weapons. All I needed to do was mention the key words. Will you support Obama? and sign our petition. That's why you said, we want a Nazi takeover of America, fascism for Obama. And what did they say? Sounded good, it just goes right over their head. Anything to support Obama. And the then the guy words. goes, you go, yeah, we want the Nazis to take over and confiscate the guns. And the guy goes, you don't have to tell me, buddy, I understand. As long, I mean, you could say, we're gonna put babies in wood chippers for Obama. They'd say, sure. I mean, uh, Mark Dice is our guest. Back on this June 2nd, 2013 transmission. Tomorrow, if all is well tonight, when I get on this plane, I'll be broadcasting for the weekday show from England. Find out details at infowars.com forward slash Bilderberg, or the media says that doesn't exist, so infowars.com forward slash the letter B, and uh, you will be there or links just at infowars.com and prisonplata.com. Free audio feeds, video feeds. Our, our 10 person plus reporting team, this is gonna be history making because they're trying to block us. Speaking of somebody confronting globalists, people like Henry Kissinger that called for uh, reducing world population by cutting off food supplies, and State Department Memorandum 200 that was declassified a few years ago. Uh, Luke Radowski of We Are Change, one of my uh, most successful protégés, goes around confronting these globalists co constantly, and he was able to get into this event uh, and talk to the former Secretary uh, of State who has been indicted as a world war criminal in many different countries. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk to Luke Radowski right now about that. Uh, I want to bring uh, Luke Radowski up here. Let's play this clip of him, uh, just a short clip. We already played it last hour, the whole thing, confronting Herr Kissinger when he was getting this Freedom Award. Here it is. Hi, Mr. Kissinger. It's a pleasure. How you doing? I just wanted to know, uh, what did you mean when you, you said uh, illegal we do immediately, unconstitutional takes a little longer, the WikiLeaks document? What did you mean by that? Uh, come on. No, 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 I mean it came out, WikiLeaks. Yeah, I mean it's another step on it. In it. Do you uh, know the agenda of the Bilderberg? With what? What are you doing with food? I'm just, I'm, I'm here covering this event, just wanted to talk to you. Uh, we are change, okay. and we want to know maybe what the agenda of the Bilderberg group meeting is going to be in a couple oh, days, do you know? Get lost. Uh, how does it feel winning the laws. How does it feel winning the Freedom Award when you're wanted as a mass murderer and wanted in many countries and and butchered millions of people? How, how does it feel? You're you know coward. it's a lie. You self-serving coward. Get lost. I'm not a coward. You know this Freedom Award's a lie, and you're wanted for mass murder in different countries. You know it's a lie. Good job, Luke. That's wearechange.org, and he's with us uh, right now, joining us from Washington, D.C. Uh, Luke, I mean, do, do you, uh, you know what a what Henry Kissinger's grave uh, and his coffin are called. They're called a latrine. And I love how he calls you a coward when he's a coward. He calls you self-serving when he's self-serving. This is a known criminal dirtbag that said cut food off the third world to starve and cause wars. This is a war criminal. Luke Radowski, we salute you for what you've done. Yeah, it seems like he's um, bringing out his qualities onto me. Last, the other time I confronted him, he called me a sick person and that I should go to hell, which is pretty interesting coming from that perspective. But Kissinger, I think he already knows uh, who I am. We got him a third time. We actually made a video detailing every step of the way of how we're actually able to do this on our YouTube channel. You just go to youtube.com forward slash we are changed and you can see the behind the scenes shenanigans that go on with these people like David Petraeus, David Koch, and Henry Kissinger making up fake awards so they could kiss each other and pat each other on the back and promote themselves and empower themselves. It was pretty much a sideshow. It's a fake award that they're giving to each other. It just shows how delusional these people are. And the award was called the Intrepid Freedom Award. It was giving it was given to Henry Kissinger for so-called promoting democracy. I mean, 
it just doesn't get any more Orwellian than it is. No, but that's like Obama being given a peace prize. All it did was totally discredit the peace prize. Yeah, but, but this is not even like the peace prize. This is like a made-up award that they just Got made it. up. Yeah. And so we were able to go in there. The press, uh, press relations people were extremely stringent. They told us they were always with us. They were always watching us. They told us, no interviews. You can't ask any questions. You just, you're just here to take pictures and videos. And that's, that's sad because that just shows you what journalism has become. There were other journalists there. It's not because, journalism. You repeat what yeah, comes repeat. out of uh, Henry Kissinger's proboscis. Yeah, mainstream media has become public, public relations for the establishment, for the elite. They're not there asking hard, legitimate questions. They're not even trying to find a way to actually go around the different rules and security that they set up. They're just complying, which is sad to see. And what we're trying to change here at We Are Change is, is the whole perspective of how we should act. We should act like we are the mainstream. Yeah, media. people That's shouldn't totally. act sycophantic towards these war criminals. And citizen journalism is what scares them. And people out there listening will call me up and go, is it all right if I reference one of your articles in my book? And I'm like, number one, that's just referencing. You have a right to do that. And I'm like, or Alex, I want you to help me plan going to city council and asking questions. Just do it. It's like the Nike slogan. You know, just stop using Chinese sweatshop labor, Foxconn. But, uh, you know, to be serious, we've got to simply take action. Luke, wh what else do we not see that's going on behind the scenes uh, I mean, what was it like uh, being close to Henry Kissinger? Because I've, I've heard of smell o vision but I almost like smelled the smell of like a dead animal uh, when, when looking at Kissinger up close. And he looked also like he was, uh, you know, like a meatloaf that had been left outside for a week. I mean, he, 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 he reeked of failure and of like the maw of hell's uh, tongue lapping out to embrace him in the ninth uh, circle of Dante's Inferno. Someone said on YouTube that he looks like Mr. Potato Head. And I do have to <laughs> say there is, there is a very good comparison if you put up the two pictures next to each other. It's Super it was, it, Mr. Mass Murdered. I'm sorry. It was, definitely, it was definitely surreal because everybody was just kissing up to him. Everybody was just saying how great of a person he was. You know, when I, when I walked up to him, everybody was afraid even to just to come up and talk to him. He had food all over his shirt. He, he couldn't even eat right, which is, which is pretty, pretty telling. But what was really He's a degenerate about, slob literally going to hell. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, what was really interesting is the amount of control the press relations people really had. I mean, it, just, it was just sickening being there. But at the end of the day, they didn't have control because you just ran their blockade and got the question in. Exactly, and if there's a will, there's a way, and that's why what I want to tell people out there, you know, don't ask for permission, just go out there, go do it. What I'm working on right now is talking to certain individuals, and I'm trying to teach them every aspect of journalism, every aspect of covering these events, and I'm trying to prop up as many individual people as I can, and if people want to get involved, I'm also going to be traveling through Europe, but if you could build up some journalists there, that would be amazing, but people could hit me up on my Twitter, just look at We Are Change on Twitter, and then I want to get in contact with as many individuals as I can so we could, so I could actually sit down one-on-one -on -one with them, teach them how to uh, be the change that they want to see in this world, teach them how to do real journalism and prop them up and push them up. And hopefully there won't be just two or three people asking hard questions. There'll be, you know, we'll be able to totally take over the mainstream media. Everywhere the these globalists them. go, we've got to be there confronting them. And as the mainstream media rots away, and, and turns into bones like the dinosaurs, we are rising. And that's why we're at this critical historical juncture because there is a big dumbed down mass that's getting more divorced from reality, but there's also a mass getting more informed every day. Take the IRS scandal, all these other scandals. Our credibility is just shooting straight up right now. Luke, are, are, are you seeing the awakening I'm seeing? I definitely am. And the potential of, of anything that could happen is right within our grasp. It's right within our hands. It's just up to all of us to not be afraid to be who we really are, to speak our minds, to stand up and to take action. And if we all do that uh, all at once, there's nothing that could stop it. We are already shaming the media. We're, we are already becoming the new mainstream media. But we have to keep it up. We have to do more. We have to have other individuals to step up. And by the way, people always think tyrannies are invincible. 
until they finally fall. It's not the end of the world. This new world order is not destined to take over. It can be blocked. It can be postponed. It can be defeated like Nineveh and its 100-year reprieve. We have a job to do this. Uh, Luke and Mark Dice, we will uh, both talk to you soon. And uh, Luke, I'm going to be seeing you at Bilderberg 2013 there in uh, Watford. I definitely will be there, and we're going to be all over Europe, so definitely check out uh, all of our updates. We're going to be doing a lot of work. All right, there. great and, job. Yeah. Great job, Luke. Great job, Mark Dice. And we're going to have Joel Skousen, who's in studio with us, on for, I think, about an hour special interview tonight. We'll see how long it goes. On strategic relocation, what does that really mean? Government strategically re, uh, locates, corporations strategically locate. I noticed in his book, that's the best research I've seen out there in the film we produced, uh, strategic relocation, that where he's saying live is where the globalists are moving in in many cases. But he picks areas alternate to that, but still close by. Uh, and you know, where I live, which I separately did my own research and later found he'd also recommended, the hill country of Austin is one of the few safer areas in a whole constellation of problems. And that's basic mammals trying to pick a place that they think is safe. They act like being prepared and being ready is, is, is kooky or weird. That is a instinct of, of moronicness or kind of an anti-instinct to try to drum into you. But that's tonight, Nightly News, 7 o'clock this evening. Uh, he also just survived. We'll talk about that at the end of the hour. Uh, a harrowing, a plane crash. They said it was one in a million to survive, much less be unscathed. Talk about guardian angels. So we're glad to have you here, Joel, uh, in person. And uh, he flew on a commercial uh, uh, aircraft to get here. He, of course, is a uh, uh, former uh, Marine Corps, was a captain or more uh, in the uh, Marines, uh, carrier pilot, naval pilot. So uh, interesting individual. We're going to have Joel Skousen to cover the latest developments on the IRS, the spying on the reporters, uh, and where he thinks that's going politically. Uh, and is this a chilling effect, or are they trying to divert off of Benghazi? I think they hope that at first, but this is actually capturing people's imagination. You know, how do you pray? What is your pro-life? They told pro-life groups, you've got to go out and 50% of the time be pro-abortion. Government can't do that. They can't tell you what your First Amendment is. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That's how the First Amendment begins. Then it's the freedom of the press, freedom to assemble. So that's all the info we're going to be going over on that front. And then how that ties into Benghazi. And, of course, uh, Joel Skousen is also the editor-in-chief over at worldaffairsbrief.com and I think has some of the most, from my research, and I'm obsessed with this stuff, folks, uh, so I tend to know what I'm talking about a little bit. It says some of the best piercing analysis uh, out there. And so he joins us to break all this down. Uh, Joel Scalzen, good to have you here with us. It's good to be with you, Alex. I really, uh, you know, when we talk about news, we've got a lot of facts out there. But it is the analysis that makes your stuff valuable, that makes my stuff valuable. Because we never get all the news. This is a conspiracy of omission of what's true and what's false. You just have a lot of stuff missing and we have to piece the, uh, the puzzle back together. You've had a couple of weeks now to ruminate. You've got a new report out at worldaffairsbrief.com right now. You've had some time to sit back and look at Benghazi. You, you were on right after it happened. Your analysis has turned out to be dead on. Same analysis, basically, of Colonel Schaefer. Same analysis of some of our other guests. Uh, I want to recap that coming up, but... Looking at IRS gate, looking at spy gate, looking at intimidation gate, um, what's really going on here? First of all, it's important to remember, I was reviewing just this morning the church committee uh, hearings about the CIA, where a lot was revealed about the CIA. And uh, in that, Walter Mond Mondale came out and said directly, now we've got evidence here that the, CIA, uh, the IRS has been targeting individuals that the government views as hostile to their point of view, and that they're subjecting them to yearly audits, one after another. Now, he didn't specify who they are, but I happen to know. When I was chairman of the Conservative National Committee, I talked to Bunker Hunt, and I talked to a lot of the other, other uh, funders of various conservative and Christian points, and they were all being audited every year. We now know that that was targeted. That was clear back in the 80s when that was going on. It's still going on. So now we have a cover-up about the fact that this has been going on, the press isn't focusing on that. What they're focusing on is the fact that the president fired somebody who was, in fact, going to resign 
and was going to, in fact, be leaving. Steve Miller, the acting IRS chief, had nothing to do with this. So a total cynical fraud. A total cynical fraud. But it's even worse. You have Joseph Grant, who was just put in the place of Susan uh, or, uh, Hall, uh, Ingram, who was, in fact, in charge of the, uh, this division over uh, tax exempt groups. He was just put in to replace her. A uh, graduate stepped up, and he had to step down as a, as a second one because it wasn't enough to, to fire Steve Hall. And, uh, and Susan Hall Ingram now is in charge of the IRS tax policy for Obamacare, of sticking it to those of us who don't have insurance by choice because we don't like the med medical establishment system. And now the woman that ordered all this illegal spying and harassment, she's the head of the Obamacare division with our records. I mean, it's clear they plan to use the IRS as their Gestapo. That's right. And Lois Lerner, who's the actual on hands in daily charge of the division, was not fired. And she certainly has to know about this. But it goes beyond, as I say, the Obamacare. So that brings up the case, or goes, uh, goes beyond the IRS Currently, it goes beyond the Obama administration. It was going on during the Bush administration, the Clinton administration, and clear back on. Even during the Reagan administration, the IRS was targeting people. We have a runaway dark side of government. We have legitimate CIA and dark side CIA. We have legitimate FBI and dark side CIA. And in the IRS, we have legitimate, honest people doing IRS work. And we have dark side IRS. And they aren't allowed to know what the other is doing. Via compartmentalization. Exactly. And so I don't expect to see any change. There's going to be some, uh, you know, congressional investigations, uh, as in Benghazi. They're not going to go after the real problem, which is who gave, I mean, look at the Treasury Inspector General comes out with a report that this was a managerial problem, that somehow these uh, magically appeared, these criteria which were incorrect, and they ended up targeting magically without any human intervention yeah. some 500 conservative groups. Well, I've even seen... Rachel Maddow and people say we need to go after these groups. Look at their tax exemption. Uh, Media Matters put a memo out three years ago saying we're going to infiltrate media groups and destroy them. That's why it's encouraging. The head of the RNC said Obama is running a guerrilla war. He said this over the weekend on Fox against conservatives. That's absolutely true. It is a guerrilla war. They deny what they're doing while they do it. Of course they ordered it from Fast and Furious to this. Well, in the Cincinnati, our IRS person said anonymously, without giving his name, that everything that we do at the IRS comes down from the very Well, of course it does. Yes. It's just like the DA, DEA when they cover up for uh, uh, drugs that are imported from Mexico and they refuse to let uh, the, the snooping dogs go in after trucks that are sealed in Mexico. They say orders come from Washington. So that's what happens. But the Treasury was covering up for this today in the, on their IRS investigation. They said, we interviewed every official we could talk to. And they assured us that no one outside of the IRS had any influence on this tax policy. But that's not the issue, Alex, about who outside the IRS. They're assuming that if it's political interference with the IRS, it has to be from some politician outside the agency. This has been going on from within the agency for decades. Well, I know for a fact that they use food trucks with packaged food out of Mexico with the cocaine hidden in it. And one time the state police stopped a truck, found three tons of cocaine, and were ordered to turn it over. And then they deliver it, and then it's brought into a major grocery store chain and distributed out. And, and it's just well known. And then the cops want to pull me over and ask if I have drugs in my car. I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah. So there is a dark side of every portion of government in terms of enforcement, and uh, it's starting to get out more and more. Uh, but when it gets out, and this is what we're seeing, it's going to be the big thing we're going to have to discuss uh, <clears throat> is whether or not they're going to take down Obama over these things because there's four major scandals now that have piled up. That's what I want to ask you. Why did the scandals come out now from your intel and your analysis? What does this signify and where is it going? It is hard to tell. In the AP scandal, for example, of the news, I know how this happened. Now, I want to be very, very clear with your listeners that the government surveils every form of communication. They don't listen to it all. They record it all. They, they record it all. It's all digitally recorded. And then they go back when they want to. That's right. They go back. Actually, they're sifting. They have computers going through and sifting and picking out Keyword. keywords. Mm -hmm. And compartmentalizing. They have basic compartments for criminals. They have basic compartments for enemies. They have compartments for allies. They spy on Israel. They spy on France. They spy on Britain. They don't like to say that, but they do that. I owe my soul to the company store. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we're back uh, live, and, and we're going to get into the other scandals, Benghazi, IRS, all of it. And, you know, I guess Joel hasn't said what he thinks yet. He says he's not sure, but I agree with him that they're certainly going to use these leaks coming out because they, they're now saying it. So, you know what? Let's just get rid of warrants, period. We're trying to keep you safe. But you read um, Glenn Greenwald and the London Guardian and others, they're pointing out the people they're arresting, like Stephen Kim, talked to the Fox News uh, chief, Washington bureau chief, just publicly. He went there, talked to him. Hey, you're the State Department, you know, person on this. What do you think? You think Kim Jong Un might detonate more nukes uh, to threaten people as underground tests? Yeah, we don't have any proof of that, but that's kind of what we think. Oh, well, you're arrested, and then now they're saying that. Well, I tell you what, we might go after the Fox reporter for this. I mean, this is really. Just the brazen criminality of these people now where they're saying, look, you don't even criticize anything or we'll come after you. But look at this. The impeachment option, Representative Jason Chaffetz, is that how you pronounce it? Chaffetz, a Utah Republican, says President Barack Obama may face impeachment over his administration's response to the Benghazi attack. Yeah, they, they've been caught lying there and the Situation Rooms all saw the drones, all saw the stand down. Uh, they know that. NATO knows that. And so that's what they're really scared of. But, but Joel, uh, getting back now to what you've been trying to say in that last short segment, you were talking about how they're going to try to pass stuff on the back of this. Uh, you've got the floor. Get into the, uh, the IRS stuff, the, the AP stuff, where you think it's going, and then finally Benghazi and where you think uh, you know, the New World Order is right now and what good people in government but just in the general public can do to, to really uh, push these people back. Well... My two examples that I started out with were torture and the surveillance, uh, domestic surveillance got caught up in, in terrorism. And they were admitted, the government through the leaks that I think they caused, admitted both that they were doing torture, uh, even though they tried to downplay it as uh, something, and that they were surveilling in a limited way that was going beyond the law. And they tried to justify it with Congress so that they had predictable hacks in Congress to introduce immediately legislation allowing this expansion of torture, expansion of uh, enhanced interrogation. Uh, and so uh, there was this uh, scenario where the government is using purposeful leaks. And I don't believe the government ever allows any leaks that they don't want out because they surveil everything. They can find out anything. They don't need to go to court to ever find out who a reporter's sources are. They surveil it, everything. But this appears... My first impression is that both the IRS leak is an inadvertent leak. And the reason I say that, it's been going on for decades. Oh, I agree with you. So, 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 so you agree with me then? Yes. But the reason that I feel that is that Obama came out and his scriptwriters wrote in, but we must give the due respect to the IRS. I know they're very powerful, but we must not limit their power. In other words, he's trying to forestall anything in Congress that would limit the power. Of the IRS. That means they're trying to protect the IRS, not expand its authority. Don't do anything to, uh, to stop. So I, I think that was inadvertent. I think the AP was inadvertent um, because it, uh, it didn't appear to come from, uh, you know, a direct government source. Uh, and uh, it is, it's not something I don't think they can expand. That is, they cannot expand and say, well, the press isn't going to have the same rights that they are. Um, what does the phenomenon mean, though? That because I, I've argued with you, well, not really argue, but talk to you about this. Where you're saying, look, a lot of these leaks are fake, or there's no way these people have real sources. I'm finding government people are mad and don't care anymore, and we're getting to the point where they're just willing to leak stuff and go, okay, go ahead and put me in jail for exposing you're a dirty crook. The problem with this is that after the AP leak, the AP reporter said universally nobody wants to talk to us anymore. So it is shutting down whistleblowing. That may be chilling effect. It's a chilling effect. Nobody dares talk to because everybody realizes, every whistleblower now realizes that the press is being bugged. Now, we knew it before. You know what the answer is? Mail it to people. Mail right. it to Infowars.com. Mail it to Drudge. Put a, you know, uh, other address or no address or whatever, and then get it to people. Isn't this interesting? I tell my clients, too, if they're worried about privacy... Look, everything you tell me in a conversation about your consultation is going to be recorded. Everything is going to be talked about. Either you got to fly me out there to talk about your private situation, or you got to mail it to me. Isn't that ironic that the, the snail mail is now the safest? Because it requires a human being to intervene in every letter that they open. And, and they've got the private amazing. offices at all the places where they take it, but still they're lazy and won't do it. And then they don't know what to do with the intelligence. So the answer is go back to snail mail. 
But if you go to snail mail and you introduce and you, you open it up, you've got to photocopy, you've got to scan it. I mean, it's a tremendous costly process. And the government's under sequester. Even the CIA, who has black budget type of thing, doesn't want to put a lot of money in it. Well, how does France communicate with itself? It has uh, the, the pneumatic tubes. That's the right term, the pressure tubes, and that's under their sewers how the government sends its info, knowing that's going to be hard to scan, you know, with satellite. No, that's right, and it's physical. I mean, anything digital just isn't safe uh, anymore. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't you shouldn't stop all communication. Oh yeah, well then they say, you know, well what do you have to hide? Well, why is right. government so secret? Because because you're a criminal government that wants to use the well, who I've really been told by high level sources they spy on is inventors and people. I mean, the poor folks get everything stolen. I mean, they, in, and, and American companies, why are they trying to shut down American companies? They do everything they can. That's a hard question, Alex. Uh, I think they want us dependent on China more. They want to drive people over, overseas. Uh, they want us so that when this, you know, and my theory is that they're setting us up for eventual nuclear war. That's when the real curtain comes down. They can justify anything at that time. They want to make sure that we don't have any ability to respond to the war so they can say you've got to go to a militarized new world order. It's, sure. It's globally that we've got to fight this next war. We don't want to have America re uh, rejuvenated as if... as if Exactly. I want to get too. to Benghazi with you, but yes. the army has come out and said we don't need the president for authorization to quell civil disturbances. Is that so they can start doing it routinely like they already are and not have it be a big presidential deal? But then there's the issue of we're, they're already saying the military is under NATO, is this like some type of weird quasi announcement of a military industrial complex pure coup? Or what do you think's behind that? NATO is to become the militarized order of the global globalist. And that's why, uh, you know, everything from Eisenhower on was to get France, you know, de Gaulle didn't want to be part of NATO, didn't want to supply troops, to twist his arm, to get Adenauer to reform the German troops and things. But it wasn't it was because NATO is going to be the military arm of the New World Order. And they are going to cut off the communist nations that are part of the United Nations, reform, call it the League of Democracies or some more innocuous name. So to get American support after they've been nuked or after various military cities have been nuked, I do not believe that the Russians and Chinese are going to nuke everything in the United States. They don't want to be looked as the bully of the world. They're taking down the bully of the world, but they want blackmail. All right, folks, we'll be back with more of this very serious interview with Joel Scowls in the World Affairs Brief. But first off, I want to tell you something that's incredibly original and true. Uh, and I also have a bridge to sell you. Uh, and I also have some oceanfront property in Arizona. You can see the sea from my front porch. Uh, uh, no, no, to be serious, uh, I'm coining the term, don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after these important messages. Waging war on corruption, crashing through the lies and disinformation. It's me, Alex Jones, right here broadcasting on Sunday and playing some of the most powerful excerpts of uh, the broadcast the last few weeks. Here is more of Joel Skousen on what's really going on on our planet. They've always had this uh, philosophy that uh, we are superior to the West. We're going to have to take them down military. But they don't want to destroy the West. They know the West is the engine of ingenuity. They depend on it for all their military, uh, you know, but they want to control it, not just have to spy on it. That's why they want to nuke the military of the U.S. The U.S. wants its own military nuke because it drives Americans into accepting a new world order, a militarized new world order. But the Russians and Chinese don't want to destroy either Europe or America totally. They want to decapitate the military. They want to take down the U.S. socially with an EMP strike, which will happen about 20 minutes before the actual nuclear strike on American military targets and communication targets. And then they'll issue a blackmail notice. Give up, you know, and everyone will be acceptable to that. I mean, literally, uh, in, in the sense that, you know, what is there now that the military, but our leaders will come out of their bunkers and say, no, no, the Russians and Chinese deceived us. And finally, they'll have the gumption to say, we need to fight. And everything the U.S. puts out about China now is pacifistic. Oh, no, it's not a problem. And they know that everybody will line up and then the secret weapons roll out. That's right. It's, and it's the real deal and we take over the world. But That's now it's a fascist, Anglo-American, eugenics-based New World Order. That's right. And all of this is leading up that we're talking about. You know, we're seeing the preparation for martial law. We're seeing the preparation for camps that are being established. And for 20-year wars. I mean, they're, they're long hauling. That's right.
seed but, bunkers, underground right. bases. But you know, I am resisting the call that this is imminent because they're very smart that we're dealing with. This is preparatory. And when it is unleashed, they've got to have a proper excuse or they convince the whole world that the government is tyrannical. But if they do it under the cover of war, after this nuclear weapon strike comes, then nobody questions martial law. Nobody questions any of it. Just like in Boston, the people laid down and let people strip them of their rights, take them out of the house and throw them to the ground without any... Sure, you know it came out in the 60s that the Russians wanted to nuke China with the U.S., and then the U.S. said no because it already really made a deal with the communist Chinese, kind of like helping put Mao in power. I mean, it seems like the globalists have kind of got a double game, though, that, that, that uh, I mean, they're moving to China, they're investing there, they're doing everything they can. But, but is that really to trick them? Because they're just giving America to the Chinese. Well, you know, a lot of people, there is this conflict within theoretical um, how globalism operates. One side says because of the Rowan Gaither quotes to Norman Dodd that we're trying to seamlessly join the U.S. with the American re Republic is that the globalists control the Russians and the Chinese and therefore... Is sure, that's the Carnegie plan. There's, yeah, there's not going to be war, but it's not true. In fact, Rowan Gaither was lying to Norman Dodd. He never would have admitted the real thing. This was a cover excuse to explain to them in some rational way. In fact, Rowan Gaither of the Ford Foundation had invited the investigator to come and get an interview. It That's right, Ford Foundation. It wasn't that he was responding to a subpoena. He invited him to come and give him the propaganda that we're trying to peacefully merge the two countries. But in fact, the globalists don't control the Russians. They're, mil they're, they're trying to induce them by giving them aid, giving them trade. And the Russians and Chinese are, are skittish. They're deathly afraid that we've got secret weapon systems they don't now know about, and they're, they're afraid Well, I've to talked attack. to Bob Bowman and many others. They can talk about what's been accidentally leaked in debates and things. They had the Star Wars program in the 70s and Shabo drones in orbit and just everything else. I mean, it's... That's right, and that's why the Chinese are really working on anti-satellite. Uh, that's right. But that's they're, their main program. They're still eight to ten years out about having the confidence to strike the West, and that's why I don't think it's imminent. But... They don't control the Chinese. They're going to make a deal with the Chinese, in my opinion, when the Russians and Chinese in a temporary alliance strike the West. And when we start this new world order war, this great new patriotic war that they'll try to get anyone, you know, enthusiastic about prosecuting, then I think they'll make a deal with China to attack Russia's rear, just as China and Russia or China, uh, I'm sorry, Russia and Hitler went after one another. And we used Russia knowing that they would be a predator and gave them aid and trade, I think will lure China in with that same thing. And the globalists want that because, you see, after the war, instead of like World War II where they gave sovereignty back to the U.S. and all the countries wanted to be independent again, they'll have this great new enemy, China, that they built up and say, now we can't disband the military New World Order Army because we've got this great threat. And so that's why I think the one thing that will be different in World War III is we won't get sovereignty. And they're enticing the Chinese, not just all the deep water ports in the Caribbean and the West Coast and the East Coast and not just the big Mexican ports, but they're giving them uh, just the entire infrastructure. 90, I saw a number 98% of rare earth minerals. It was like 90% five years ago. They're just enticing, just come, come, just every, oh, here, have it all. And, and I always look at it as just a globalist hatred of, of America, hatred of Christians, uh, really the spirit of evil that animates them. And I, I'd, I'd warn the globalists, the Anglo-Americans, I don't think you're going to get away with this. I don't think, I don't think it's going to turn out the way they think because they've got all these thousands of bio labs just randomly splicing genetics. I don't think they're in control like they think they are. I, I think there's going to be catastrophes they don't even control. There will be a loss of control once this nuclear war starts, probably for at least a year and a half, maybe two years. That's the time for America to reform in the liberty movement. And that's why strategic relocation is so important, because you can't do it like we're now. We're now spread out all over the United States. Everybody's alone. Everybody feels alone. Somehow, and I think it's through the instrumentality of war, the Lord is going to drive people together and drive people out of the big cities. There won't be a job to keep you there anymore. No excuse not to relocate. It's just that if you didn't do it prior to that, you're going to be out on the roads, you know, with masses of people like in Germany fleeing from the Russians. That's not what you're... And by the way, they, you know, they say it's kooky to get ready and geared up. All government's doing is gearing up, acting like it's the end of the world. Deep underground bunkers. This is not against terror that they're preparing. They know there's a nuclear And they war. know when they emerge, their enemy is going to be the liberty movement. That's so they're preparing right. the giant cadres, yeah. no longer secret armies, for war with us. That's right.
And I think and they're not going to and of course not going to make a deal with us to stop this because they hate us. Yeah, that's right. There's no deal to make. You know, they know that this is going to be an absolute separation between good and evil. Well, I take it back. There's an awful lot of dumbed down people who will be dumbed down because of the false patriotism of this war. They won't realize this is a global. Well, they'll be war. cannon fodder. They'll be cannon fodder and they'll join the military. And that's why I don't recommend any more of our boys and girls going to the military. Not only because of the deadly vaccines that you're required to take, but because you're not fighting to save America's liberties, even though they tell you that. You're not fighting for democracy in Syria or, or Iran. You're fighting for a globalist agenda that the U.S. government is... Well, that was my next question. I want to get into Benghazi. Uh, Joel Scouse is our guest. Isn't it an overload point, though, where they're in the Washington Post and the London Telegraph going... The, the bin Laden brigade is leading. Al-Qaeda is doing a great job fighting Assad. He's got the oil fit. And I'm like, and then when you fly, they, they treat you like you're bin Laden. I mean, how do they get away with this otherworldly absurdistness that's now going on where our government runs Al-Qaeda publicly? I, I just... Well, we know that government has always had their fingers on Al-Qaeda. They started Al-Qaeda, essentially, as funding it through the Saudis. And they've used the Pakistani ISI as well to fund another branch of Al-Qaeda. And even though there's a lot of legitimate terrorists who hate the United States that we have bred, as Ron Paul correctly stated, nevertheless, the top levels are directed. That's why in 9-11, yes, there were terrorists, but they were known to the United States military. Protected. And they, and they were protected. They were trained. They'd been on CAIA bases before. They I got, talked to the head of the U.S. Embassy uh, visa section. They were ordered to let them in. That's right. And they have they got aircraft training in large aircraft in Saudi Arabia. They didn't get it at the flying sessions. That was a cover story. So this to shield the Saudis from somebody had to train those people in. in and then we don't attack Saudi Arabia. We attack Iraq. Well, Saudi Arabia, you know, we have this incestuous relationship with Saudi Arabia. We have promised them protection. You know, they're a very corrupt regime. They claim to be Islamist fundamentalists uh, with uh, their form of Shia, uh, Sharia law there, but they aren't. They're pedophiles. They are immoral. Well, I mean, it's a Wahhabist death cult. And, and, and if you expand on that, I guess, why did the British choose them? Uh, I guess because they're the worst of the Muslims? Well, it's because they had the, the biggest oil uh, first, and they made a deal. Basically, yeah, you can nationalize it, but you've got to make sure that you supply us and you use dollars and they will continue to do so. Sure, but I mean, and, and, and of course, I guess they could use the Wahhabis to take over all of the Sunnis and then, and then use that in a war against the Shiites. It's just all divide and conquer. You were telling me during the break, because you've run some of the biggest conservative organizations in the country, Joel, uh, about back when you were in Washington in the 80s, tell people what happened. I mean, to, to let people know... We don't say this to scare you. We do this to show you how illegal the government is. I mean, how it's been, it's just, it's out of control. Tell people what happened to you and then get back into this AP thing. This happened as chairman of the Conservative National Committee, and I had an office in Washington, D.C., and I was in communication with several of the liberty groups in El Salvador and Guatemala. And uh, there was this young Army major, reserve major, who was trying to influence the conservative groups, and I didn't trust him. And so I warned in a telephone call uh, my compatriots down there in El Salvador that uh, he's coming down to visit, but you better not trust him and, and why I thought so. Within 15 minutes, that guy was standing in front of my desk saying, don't you ever talk about me to anyone on the telephone. And he wasn't in your building. He was from the That's military. Right. That's right. So he got the, he, they were listening right then. He drove right over. That's exactly right. So this was Echelon. This is the satellite system that's surveilling any overseas communications, et cetera. And, uh, and of course, this was purely domestic. This was, uh, uh, you know, my telephone and my rights were violated. They didn't have a warrant, of course. This happened instantaneously. You know, they didn't go before a judge. But it just told me right then they surveil everything. Now, well, the congressman came out last week and said they know the cloakroom's bugged. And he's like, is that impeachable? Does that rise to the level of impeachment? Uh, I mean, it, it's obviously a violation of the Fourth, Fifth Amendment. It, it's obviously a violation of the Tenth Amendment. It's a violation well, of the Tenth of the States, the separation of powers. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, these, the surveillance has gotten much worse even since my experience in 1983 because they were just doing telephones and the Echelon system was only doing things that were wirelessly being transmitted around the world. But now they've got everything digitally. You know, we have whistleblowers from the NSA talking about the uh, ISP systems that the, IS, uh, the uh, FBI has installed in every major node in the Internet so that every email, every 
digital cell phone telephone call is being recorded. And, and all your web history, everything, and that was all in the Telecommunications Act of 96, but we were called conspiracy theorists to talk about, you know, saying the Statue of Liberty exists. I mean, we're talking about known facts. It's like Gibbs was told, say the drone program doesn't exist overseas, and he's like, but it's been public for years. Just say it doesn't exist. And the press played along with that. And, and, and the press better get, folks, if you go along with this purge, it's over. My answer is everybody needs to start whistleblowing in a swarm attack, which they're not going to be able to handle. And we have to remember that the government itself covers all these leaks. In other words, there's no way that anybody leaks to the reporters. Many times they have prosecuted people during the uh, Cheney Bush administration for uh, trying to get their sources. Well, they know who the sources are, but they can't admit that they know who the source is because they know they'd be, so they go to court. To try to get the courts, uh, and the courts always uh, lay down and, and, and do what the government wants. It's very, very interesting. But the leaks about government torture, the leaks about government surveillance were done, in my opinion, on purpose back in the Bush-Cheney administration. Yeah, to scare everybody. Well, not just to scare. What they did is give Congress an excuse to then react to it and say, well, we'd better give them some more authority to surveil. In other words, we leak a mistake. We say, oh, we've got a problem. Oh, because they're illegally doing it. How about we just get rid of the law? That's what the, in fact, the New York Times said that last week. The answer is just get rid of any of it. Yeah. But, but I mean, Benghazi, what you, what's at the core of that? Well, the core is covering up for the stand down. Well, let me go back to the actual thing. We, we have an arms trading going on where they, they had captured a lot of arms in the takedown of the Libyan government. They were funneling those arms to the Syrian um, uh, Free Army, which is now a jihadist, and as we know, calls themselves the Bin Laden Brigade. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly our enemies, but we're arming them. And this was top secret. There are competitors, however, who wanted those arms for their own purposes in Libya, and they attacked the embassy. I do not believe in the blind sheik thing that James Lyon, the admiral who was present there, has been fed as the reason that that was really going down. The story is that Obama is, you know, it's like an October surprise. The Obama's uh, advisors were going to make him popular by having him get involved in getting the release of a hostage, which was to be this ambassador. And uh, they were going to basically let uh, these Al-Qaeda people capture the ambassador. Then they were going to negotiate and they were going to get the blind sheik released, which the government could have done any time. Do you believe that or not believe no, it? I do not believe it. And the reason I don't believe it is because it would have been very easy and less lethal to set it up so the ambassador on the way to this annex was captured. Well, of course, and, it, and, and too much could go wrong. What do you really think happened? I think they were transferring missiles. They wanted it covered up. That's right. And they knew that if the ambassador survived, there would be a congressional investigation on this. And this guy was apparently, even though he was knowledgeable of what he was doing, he was taking orders, a good yes man to the government, he would have talked. So they decided to let him die, let everybody die. And that's why there was a stand down order. Don't let any reinforcements. Unfortunately, about 30 people survived, wounded from that, who didn't die in that. And they could have talked as well. That's the only reason to explain why they took them to Walter Reed uh, after Germany, to Walter Reed Army Medical Center and kept them incommunicado, meaning that they aren't allowed to talk to the press, even your family. Well, exactly, but I watched Hicks and others. They were freaked out, they were angry. That Those were real testimonies. Yeah, those weren't the witnesses that I'm talking no, about. No, I understand, those there's others. Conduits. Those are mild whistleblowers, and Greg Hicks did a good job talking about the stand down. But you'll notice that he he says, I don't know who issued the order to General, uh, it wasn't General Ham. Yeah, General so where are the 30 people? That You never hear that in no, the press. No, no, and that's right. The 30 people are still incommunicado. They're not coming before, and Congress is not demanding that they come before them. They know what was going on. Oh, my goodness. You know, I, I knew that, and, and, and just hiding in plain view, but hadn't covered it. See, a lot of people thought, well, Greg Hickson, are the whistleblowers? No, they aren't. They're mild whistleblowers. They aren't the ones that are really trying to keep away who were there during the attack. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our little experiment here tonight. If you've been upset by some of the things we've covered, I would just say take more shots, more vaccines. The government that's been caught doing secret experiments on thousands of people, including foster children, is totally trustworthy. A shooting black men up with syphilis and letting them die. It's spread it over 45 years with Tuskegee. This is a loving government. So take all your vaccines, drink your hydrofluorosilicic acid, drink your fluoride water. Trust the system. Remember it loves you. Remember it cares about you. 
and support the government's preparations to take private bank accounts and pension funds as they've done in Europe. Uh, I just want to say I agree with Homeland Security. I think they're here to keep us safe. And I love tyranny. I, I thought I would bring some of the fairness doctrine, since they're trying to get that back into law, that I would you know, just give some equal time here. I love tyranny. And uh, I'll see you back tomorrow from England, 11 a.m. Central, at InfoWars.com. Alex Jones signing off to Infinity Tyranny and QE3 and beyond.